Hi, my name is Paul Steed, and in this Mac 7 tutorial, I'm going to combine spline cages, patches, and subdivided surfaces in one model to create an organic shape that's real time friendly. To do this, we're going to use the queen from a chess set that I've been working on. Now, the motif is this kind of Greek mythology underwater um, idea so that the queen is actually a mermaid. Now, the way I usually model is to take a low polygon approach and then apply mesh smooth to it to, to end up with a higher resolution model. I do this because in real time applications like games or, or anything to do with hardware, you have to commit to a polygon before you can actually see it by the real time engine. Now with their hair, I was trying to go for this underwater, wildly flowing locks idea. And I lofted a bunch of shapes down some paths that simulated hair strands. And the idea was to go back through and to model all that into one mass to make it feel like a statue. So I started to do this, and even as you see it now, it just it became too much work to do that. So I did some more research and came up with a few pictures on statues. Now if you notice here the the unifying theme is that the hair is one mass and it's been carved into a hair shape. So you get these swirls down in here and you get uh, all this stuff that that is as, is as large a chunk of, of whatever's being sculpted as they can make it. In this other idea I think I was just going for too many loose flowing strands like this one up here it just if I were to do that it wouldn't make it, it would take away from the feeling it's a statue so I have to build a new hair shape and for this new shape I'm going to use a different modeling approach I'm going to use a spline cage with the surface modifier to create a patch model instead of just jumping right in and making a low polygon model now this isn't to say it's not going to be a polygon model because the point of this tutorial is to show you how you can combine patch models and polygon models or subdivided surface models to to end up with the shape that you want. The benefit of using a spline cage with a patch model is that it gives you the the power and flexibility to make a more organic shape like a mass of hair. And using the stack functionality in Max you'll be able to easily combine uh, two distinct modeling approaches to result in one model that's real-time friendly. To do this, we first need to go in and select and delete the old hair. Then let's hide everything else we don't need. Make a copy of the queen object. Let's turn off mesh smooth. Make a copy of that by just holding down shift and clicking on it. Hide the old queen. Go down the stack and delete everything we don't need. And now we can start our spline cage. Turn back on mesh mood just to make sure we have everything in perspective. And again at max, when you go up and down the stack, this showing result toggle on and off, feel free to like go back and forth between that. Or you can just travel up and down the stack. Now, when I deleted all those vertices, I just noticed I had ignore back facing on, so let's turn that off. Go to the back and delete all that geometry that we don't need, as well as the arms that we don't need. Now we're ready to start building the mesh. 
first shape of the spline cage we want to make is the the part in the middle of the hair. So in the front view, we can go let's see about say up here, here, there, and there. Whenever I make a line or use a spline cage like this, I create it first as a corner which is what it is by default, unless you start dragging on the bezier handles, and then I make it smooth to make it nice and malleable. So once you get it in one view, go another view, and or actually better yet, line up on our face, hit G to turn grid off, and I want to change my, we'll make sure my coordinate system's on screen. Normally it's on view. Just getting ahead of myself here. So I want to approximate the part of her hair where it's going to be kind of like meeting in the center of her head. Purple's a little bit harder to see, so let's make it a dark color. We'll make it a dark blue. And look at it from a couple different angles. And we can make our second spline. For this one, let's go to back to the front view. Create line again. Get it where we want it. And create lines can look something like this. It's kind of like this wavy, lazy feel to it. Again, let's change the color to something a little bit easier to see. Select vertex, right click on them, make them smooth. This guy's make him a little bit more useful. Okay, let's go to a different view. Massage this into shape. A lot of this, like I said before, I'm kind of seeing in my head as I go. So it's a pretty intuitive process. from it or enough. I also want to kind of follow the contours of maybe your shoulder or so. But it doesn't have to be exactly form fitting. It can be just wavy for the sake of being wavy. Okay. Let's see, it's too many, it's too straight along one plane, so let's do that. top view. In shift drag, select and shift drag this, the line we just made, over and back a little bit. Doesn't matter what we call it. Freeze the first one so we don't pick up by accident. Now, we want eventually to link all these splines to a vertex at the part. 
So we need to see those vertices. The way you can do that is to go to Properties, click on Vertex Ticks. Now we can see all the vertices as uh, little hash marks, little crosses, versus being invisible unless we pick it. So go to the new shape, and, or the new uh, spline. Let's shape it up a little bit. Up there, 